Hey guys, it's your girl Ula La Naj on all social media platforms, also known as Life Coach Naj. And I thank you guys for coming back to just have a quick conversation with me. I am so glad that you guys love the content that I put out before that last video. Y'all really did some numbers on that last video, and I hope that I can continue to deliver content that is beneficial to you. I am so excited to see all of you on your tech journey. Like, honestly, like to hear people landing jobs in tech, pivoting from backgrounds that have nothing to do with tech or tech sales or IT or marketing or whatever you decide to do when it comes to pivoting into tech. Like, I just love to see it. Like, literally, it makes my day, especially when you're my client. Like, if you're one of my clients and you utilize some a service that I provide, I love to hear the testimony. So I cannot wait to see what your story looks like. But today, we are going to get into the nitty gritty of my story. Like, literally, I'm gonna give you the details of everything that I went through um, on my journey into tech. And this is really to motivate you guys, to let you guys know that no matter where you're coming from, you can do it too. And stay tuned because I'm also going to reveal my biggest regret throughout this entire journey. So make sure you watch until the end of the video. Do not click off, watch until the end of the video. So if you're here, you're probably following me on LinkedIn or Instagram, or you've seen me on Anthony O'Neill's show, or you've seen me on Tech is the New Black. I am so glad you guys wanted to connect with me and follow my journey. Um, and so today I just wanted to go into the details of what that looked like for me. So if you've been following me, you probably heard a little bit about my story, but there are some things I'm gonna share today that you don't know. And so I've always said that when you work in HR, there is a cap. And when I mean by cap, I mean cap and salary. So I worked in state and government for HR offices, and I've seen that like most people are there and they just want to stay there until they retire. And so there's a cap on salary. You can't really move around unless someone leaves the job. And I found that I just wanted more for my life. And so I was going back and forth about what I wanted to do. I was almost turning 30, I'm 30 now. Um, and so I was like literally looking to see like what I can do in order to increase my finances. Like many of you, you're probably on uh, a financial or a debt-free journey right now and you just wanna make your life a little bit more comfortable. And so that's why you're pivoting into tech. Tech is a lucrative field and so it is a great field to go into no matter what background you're coming from. So I was already looking into how can I utilize the skills that I learned in HR and pivot into another career path that was more lucrative. And in my research, I saw that my friend Cyrus was talking about tech and honestly, I was just like, I don't see how I fit into tech, especially with six years of HR and prior to that still clerical work. Um, I don't see how I fit in that. When I was doing HR, I was doing recruiting, I was doing the entire onboarding process. And so that's why right now I offer those services. I do mock interviews, I do resume edits, I do coaching calls with course career students, with career students, um, so that I can still utilize those uh, HR skills in the tech space as well. But as I was saying, Cyrus kept going on and on and on about how tech was so lucrative. And so I did my research and I found that with my HR skills, um, tech recruiting or tech sales would be best for me. Also, customer success would also be good for me too, but I wanted to do tech sales because it was the cheapest route, honestly. I mean, if you're, if you're looking to make more money, you're not looking to spend more money. And so Course Careers was only $450. They have a payment plan and I'm going to link my $50 off coupon below um, but it was the, it was the easiest way I can get into tech and so I joined course careers but let me rewind that okay before I joined course careers um, I had found myself in a financial bind and a lot of you know the story but um, I'm going to share that uh, I ended up losing my father very suddenly and there was no insurance plans, there was no life insurance or anything like that that was in place. And so the family had to take care of his funeral arrangements. Me being his daughter um, and having to go through the process of making the last call on his life and um, also having to uh, help pay for his funeral, it really put me in a financial bind. So not only was I grieving the loss of my father, but I was financially challenged because we don't say broke. I was financially challenged 
and um I was trying to transition out of my career so it was a lot going on at the time um but uh two weeks after my father passed I ended up just taking a risk on myself like I was just like you know what girl you just have to bet on yourself because you cannot be in this position again you don't know what life is going to bring and you got to make sure that you have a financial safety net and I didn't have that um but at the same time like I was definitely going to sacrifice for my father um I didn't think that that was something I had to think about and I was willing to lose everything um just to make sure that he was laid to rest um and so that's what I did and that in <laughs> That made me uh, actually push myself to join course careers, and I did. And when I was doing that, um, I found that juggling my nine to five and also doing course careers at the same time, um, it was a little hectic because I was also grieving as well. So my mental was a little off. I was trying to transition out of HR and just do so much at the same time. And so I ended up leaving HR and I put all my eggs in one basket and I tried course careers. So I was grieving, I was doing a little odd jobs around um, just to fill up the time, but I also made sure that I made time to complete the course as well because I still wanted better for myself. And so as most of you know, I finished the course in four weeks. I ended up taking the exam and I didn't do so well. Um, I mean, I was just a couple points off, but it wasn't enough to pass it. So I took it a second time. And I know a lot of you are taking the exam or getting ready to take the exam. It's okay if you have to take it twice. I was grieving. I was trying to make sure that I was financially secure and also at the same time transition, like I said, out of HR. And so for me, um, it just wasn't a good time for me to do so. So I waited and I actually took the exam a second time, passed it, of course. Um, and now I help people pass the exam because I still have my notes and I allow uh, people to give me what their concerns are. And I let them know exactly what is on the final. And then we go through um, just how to maneuver that process as well. Because I know it could be very, very scary going through a course and then taking a final on something that you have never knew before. But Course Careers does a great job in letting you know exactly what you need to know, not only to pass the final, but to land a job in tech sales. So in the midst of that, I also moved out of my loft because at that time, I just didn't have enough money to, um, to afford it. And I'm not ashamed to say that. I did not have enough money to afford it. I made that big financial um, leap in, in helping pay for my father's funeral. I was going through jobs. I had left the HR job. And so at the time, I just wasn't able to um, afford it. So I ended up staying with a friend um, for a little while and I ended up landing a job in FinTech four weeks later. So it took me a total of eight weeks to land a job in FinTech. Four weeks to complete the course, and then four weeks of applying and interviewing in order for me to land a job in FinTech. Now, I'll let you guys know that during those four weeks of me doing the interviewing process, applying the jobs, um, I think I probably applied to about 20 jobs a day. And I think that's even light, especially because um, you're going to get more no's than you get yeses. And that is going to prepare you for the SDR role if that is what you choose to do. Uh, SDR is sales development representative. So if you are doing the tech sales um, course and course careers, then uh, putting in those applications is going to prepare you for that because you are going to get a lot of no's on the phone when you are calling prospects. But you got to get up and do that every single day. Um, but you will get some yeses just like when you're in the application process you are going to get some yeses you are going to get your yes the yes that you are looking for but it is preparing you for the role and um, I'm going to go a little bit more into what the role entails in another video but I will say that you just got to keep putting in them applications I don't care if you don't meet the requirements continue to put in those applications because it is a numbers game you've got to just put in those applications um, I did go on maybe around like five interviews because I knew what I was looking for and so I didn't take every yes 
um, as a green light. Um, I made sure that I knew what I was looking for in the job um, and knew what kind of company I wanted to work for, whether that's FinTech, EdTech, um, or whatever you're looking for. Make sure that you know what kind of product you can stand behind because when times get rough, you'll be able to uh, go through the trenches and stick with the job. And so it's so crazy because the job that um, I got, I did not apply for. The recruiter actually reached out to me. And honestly, when I set up the pre-screening, I did not take it serious. I was in a, I was in a grocery store, the music was playing loud. Um, but I guess I answered the questions right because she wanted to offer me um, an interview. But the reason why I wanted to bring this up is because your LinkedIn presence matters. Your LinkedIn presence matter. And I can go through another video on how you can uh, enhance your LinkedIn presence, but your LinkedIn presence really does matter. Um, but anyway, uh, after the call, she told me to send her my resume. And honestly, I ghosted her for two weeks because I didn't know the company and I had my eyes set on companies that I wanted to work for. And that's one thing I want to say to you guys. Do not finish the course and say, oh, I want to work for these big companies because you're going to miss out because some startup companies or some smaller companies are the best companies that you can work for. And I'm so happy that after two weeks, I actually, you know, spin the block. Now, normally, <laughs> I'm the person that blocks the spin, but I spent the block and I sent her my resume and I ended up getting um, an interview on a Friday and an offer letter on a Monday. Now, most companies are going to uh, have four, three, five, who knows? They have different uh, amounts of rounds that you have to go through in the interview process, but there are some companies that just give you one and then they're done. And I'm so glad that this company was a one and done. But yeah, I ended up landing a job at FinTech and honestly, ever since I joined the tech community, my life has never been the same. And so I know hearing my story, it sounds like, whew, she went through a lot just to get to where she is. And you know what? It's nothing but the grace of God that I even landed a job in tech that quick. I have friends who landed in two weeks, in two months, in six months. And I just want you to know that your story is different like your story is going to be different than those that you see around you never compare your story to others because what happened to me may not happen to you it might be quicker for you it might be later for you but i will say that your story is still worth it and people need to hear your story because they will connect with you in different ways that they connect with me or others who have shared their journey but i really want to make this video to let you know that no matter what you're going through or what background you're coming from, you can still pivot into tech and I just need you to push through. If you're taking the course right now, push through. If you are job seeking right now, push through. Get those applications in. If you're having trouble with uh, interviewing, hit me up. If you're having trouble getting noticed, hit me up because then it's a resume problem. But if you're, if whatever, wherever you are right now in your tech journey, continue to push through because it's so worth it. I was able to double my salary and also bring different streams of income. So it's definitely worth it. And I just need you to push through and bet on yourself. But as promised, I said I was going to let you guys know what my biggest regret was. And my biggest regret was that I didn't do it sooner. That's my only regret, that I didn't do it sooner. I'm going to do a video more on the tech sales role for those who are going to take the course or those who have t taken the course and, you know, is doing their job seeking journey right now. I'm going to do more on the, uh, the role itself so that I can relieve <laughs> the tension because I know you feel tension going into a new role. I'm going to relieve the tension by letting you know what the role really entails and that you can do it. It doesn't matter what background you're coming from. You can do it. And stay tuned, subscribe to the channel. I'm also going to be doing more videos on the job seeking process, giving HR tips so that you guys don't have to actually uh, go through the process of scrounging for answers. I'm gonna give you the answers and tips right on this channel. So go ahead and subscribe and I cannot wait to hear your success story.